Today, uh, we, like I said earlier, we're starting this new series on lost virtues, things like today, honor. Uh, next week, uh, we're looking at uh, purity uh, and how uh, maybe uh, we don't practice a life of purity in, in our repentant life as we should. And we're going to be looking at integrity and thanksgiving, being thankful, uh, virtues that uh, seem to be utilized less in our society, in our own personal lives for uh, reasons of actually warfare, act, uh, where uh, we're under attack by uh, the world and our flesh and the devil. And, uh, and, and this, this word honor uh, hits me in a way that, uh, you know, it, it can be really hard to talk about in some ways because the reality is there isn't too many honorable people in the world. And that sounds kind of stark. Um, in fact, if you get to know every one of us right here today, uh, we're all dishonorable in our uh, ability to follow God's commands. And, uh, and, but as, as we think about uh, being honorable as a nation, as a, as a people, uh, I, I think of places I've been where uh, they seem to honor or at least show honor better than maybe we do in America. Uh, I know uh, Pastor Chera, uh, when, when you guys shake hands, uh, what's a common way you show honor uh, to people uh, from your culture? You don't just shake hands, you do what else? You use both hands, and uh, I don't know the reason why you use both hands, but I practice that a little bit in the mirror, and there's this, there's this action that happens when you put out your hand and you go to shake someone's hand. The American way is chest out, firm grip, show them who's the boss, right? I'm, I'm not against, you know, honoring somebody with a good firm handshake. But when you go to take your wrist with your other hand, it causes you to what? Bow. Just a little bit. And that's a, a way of a culture that, that shows honor. I like the, uh, the country, uh, it's in Arabia, where you sit around a table and you eat everything with your fingers. Well, uh, that's Chara's way too. And then when you're done, to show honor to the cook, do you know what you do? Belch. Yeah, we get in trouble in America for, that. that's not showing honor, that's showing disrespect, but there's different ways to uh, show honor uh, in, in cultures and in different ways of life, but uh, when I think of uh, dishonor today, uh, I, I think of this letter that was written by a 15-year-old to Ann Landers years ago. It just says, I'm a 15-year-old and, and my biggest problem is my mother. All she does is nag, nag, nag from morning till night. It is Turn off the TV, do your homework, wash behind your neck, stand up straight, go clean your room. How can I get her off my back? And it's signed, pick, pick, pick. And responds, dear picky, turn off the TV, do your homework, wash behind your neck, stand up straight, and go clean your room. If you want to get her off your back. Uh, you know, today there's a text that talks about how people often honored uh, Jesus when he was on this earth. And in John chapter 6, it just says, He went away uh, from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, when did this man get these things? What is the wisdom that is given to him? So they already they recognized him as wise. How are such mighty works done by his hands? Uh, in other words, they've seen the miracles. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters with us? 
and they took offense at him. Even though he could do all this wonderful things and speak with such wisdom, they took offense, and Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. There's a a reality that they're treating him as someone very normal, very, very much like any other person that they would see growing up in their community. They didn't see him for who he is, and that is dishonor. On the other hand, uh, when you when you look at this honor, if you're to give somebody honor, the definition of the word honor is to value, to respect, or highly esteem, to treat as precious and valuable. Jesus was not treated that way. The Son of Man, God Himself, who came and wrapped Himself in flesh, was treated as very ordinary, even giving offense in the great things that He could do. He was dishonored among His own people. I think of what I try to do with couples that are getting married. I work with them to, uh, to learn to honor each other. Um, I even ask the question, what's easier to do, to, to find the faults in somebody or the good things? And in that marriage relationship, we often become very comfortable with each other and and we can become very dishonoring in how we even talk to one another the tone we may use and uh, and treat each other as very ordinary when we're an extraordinary gift to each other from God himself I had a a person come in uh, a man from one of my previous congregations that uh, was he was a brilliant guy he was very smart and he found his, his uh, wife rather dull and uh, simple, hard to engage intellectually. And he was very condescending about her. And because of that, he wondered if he even loved her. And I, I looked at him and I said, well, uh, I, obviously you loved her before and it wasn't because she was uh, on the same intellectual level as you were. Is that correct? And he goes, yeah. So what did you marry her for? What did you love her for? And he listed a few things that I would agree with. She was very, very much a people person. This man would have never talked to anybody if he didn't have this woman in his life. She brought a lot of people into his life because she had a very compassionate heart and she was very caring. And, and she exuded care for other people, and that brought people into their life in a great way. And so I looked at him, and I said, so uh, do, do you think Jesus would find you kind of dull and boring intellectually? <laughs> and he goes, probably. Do you, do you think he ever met people in, in his life that he, he found a little dull and... <laughs> And, and he said, yeah, I'm sure he's God. And, and how did he treat people? With honor. It was funny because, uh, not, yet, not funny, but it was, it was very interesting to see because I had seen his wife kind of become very downcast uh, because of the struggles in their relationship. Uh, but when he got the idea of honoring her, as the gift she was to him, you could see them both come alive in their relationship. And that's what this kind of honor is, is about. I saw it yesterday uh, in a very simple way uh, with a grandpa holding his granddaughter. Now let me, let me give the definition of, again with you grandparents out there, okay? Honor something is to value, to respect, to highly esteem, right? To treat as what? Precious. 
to value. And I'm thinking of this child sitting on this grandpa's lap, and I'm going, what has this child done to deserve that honor? And man, it was coming out all over. And this little girl's dad leans over to me and goes, she doesn't get much attention, does she? (laughs) Very sarcastically. That's honor. Jesus didn't receive that honor from those close to him. And then there was this statement I put in your bulletin there. It's uh, that respect is earned, honor is given. Respect is earned, honor is given. At first I looked at that and I thought, you know, that, that sounds pretty good. That means that, you know, I don't have to respect somebody to honor them. And there can be a case made for that, right? I mean, I I can have uh, someone in my life, it might even be a teacher, that I don't agree with what they're teaching, but I can still what? Honor them, right? I can have a president that is serving in our country, uh, and I've had a few now in my life that I'm getting a little older. I haven't agreed with presidents, but I can still what? Honor them. I think of uh, a guy like Tiger Woods. How many people think people honor Tiger? All the time, right? And, and, and we kind of judge how we're going to honor people, don't we? I, I honor Tiger for the, the way that he's played golf through his life. D- do you think I honor him for the way he lived his life? No. And so we've got this dilemma is, in fact, I wouldn't even say I respect him for that. But what did a spirit of dishonor do to Jesus' ability to minister? It says in the next verses of this passage, verses 5 and 6, And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and he healed them. And they marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled. And he went about among the villages teaching. He was limited by their inability to honor him. And so today when we look at this the lack of honor can get in the way of people becoming what God wants them to be and do. And that goes for us. That goes among us. That goes for people we know in the world as well. Honor builds up while dishonor tears down. Honor believes in the best while dishonor believes in the worst. Honor values while dishonor devalues. So, our work today is to look at who are we called to honor and why. And the first ones out of the gate, as we've talked about a little bit, is our parents. And as you look at uh, Exodus, it's that commandment from uh, Exodus 20 that says, Honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God will give you. Would you say kids are getting more uh, or doing a better job of honoring their parents or is it getting worse? I, I heard a lot, it's getting worse. I didn't hear anybody saying, oh, they're doing a much better job. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I think about this, uh, our programming today, television shows, movies. Do, do you see a lot of Parents cast in honorable roles in in the sitcoms that we watch today. I don't see much of it. I see them as these kids are trying to get their parents to straighten up. Do you hear a lot of yes sirs and yes ma'ams? Is it different from what we watched 40 years? 
years ago to what we see today. I think there's a, there's a continual movement away from the whole idea of honoring parents as we saw in the letter to Ann Landers. How many of you have heard these words come out of your mouth? I would never have talked to my parents that way. <laughs> There's some smiling going on now, right? But, but what if they hurt me? What if I've been abused by my parents? Have, have parents always been honorable? This, this is the thing. If we wait to honor till, till someone is honorable, how long are we going to be waiting? You see, it can work the other way. People can become honorable as you honor them. How do you think the mother that was written about in Ann Landers would have been if her son was honoring him, her, with how he lived his life. If he used his life to build his mother up instead of to tear her down. And the reality of the hurt that happens, that's why we have child protective policies. That's why we have places to go, safe places. That's why we, we do try to intervene where abuse is happening. That's why we have churches that teach uh, forgiveness and honor and living in a way that blesses people rather than tearing them down. And then the second thing that we see is that it expands to, it, from that one commandment, is that uh, those in authority. And, and when we go to Romans chapter 13, it says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. If you don't believe me, just go down and try to rob the bank. What he's, what he's saying is you'll be blessed if you follow the laws of the land and the people. By the way, do we always agree with how those in authority practice over us? Would you say, how many have noticed the lack of honor for presidents as we get on? Just the presidents in my life. I look back at how honored they were. And it seems more and more we dishonor the people and in doing so, we dishonor the office that they hold. I'm not saying we just become puppets. I mean, that has led to terrible times in Germany and different places where a leader was going awry. But in honoring, if, and, and even if you don't even consider the political, how about teachers? Do you think they're as honored today as they used to be? How about how about coaches? <laughs> How many parents do you see getting in coaches' faces in public because their kid's not being treated fairly? By the way, kids are not going to be treated fairly in this world. Have you ever heard of helicopter parents? Well, I want to talk about bulldozer parents. Bulldozer parents, you know, helicopters hover you know, and they're there. Bulldozer parents, they try to move everything out of the way. Every boulder, everything that would get in the way or cause their son or daughter to be hurt. Our children are going to be treated unfairly in this world. They are going to be hurt. And the best thing we can do is help them to learn how to deal with that. And the first step is what God's telling us is to honor those that are over us. If your kids are going to learn to be able to serve over people, and I mean serve like Jesus served us, they need to learn how to be under people. 
sinful people, people that don't deserve honor, but yet we are commanded to honor for the positions that they hold. And then there's the leaders of the church. This one's a little nerve-wracking for me to talk about because, you know, it includes pastors here. But First, first Timothy um, chapter 5, it says, Let the elders who rule uh, well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and, and teaching. You know, the only way I can do what I do in any church that I've ever served is because the people of God have honored me by honoring the office of the pastor. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a humbling gift that God's people give. And one of the greatest ways that I've been honored by people of the church is when they come to me with concern. Concerns about how I've said something or done something that hurt them or overlooked them. Because my sinfulness can get in the way of the honor of the office of the ministry. Uh, there are ways that you can honor me as a sinful human being that God uses in this office. And it's the same with, with staff. It's the same with uh, the elders of our church, the council, anyone who serves in any way, we, we, if we honor them, it's a way to build up and to release and to help. And so when we get down to the whole idea of honoring, it, it has to do with not whether people are really all that honorable, when I look at, in the conclusion there, I put this statement, when we in our culture are dishonoring it is because we aren't honoring God. And here's why. God is the most honoring of, of all. God honored us in Jesus Christ. While we were still sinners, while we were still dishonorable, Jesus died for us. <laughs> he gave us the greatest honor by loving us even when we were unlovable. I was reading a book by Bill Johnson. Uh, it's a great read if you, if you ever want to uh, look at it. It has to do with um, how we live our life and living life today. And he says, you know, there's three reasons why we honor every person. The first reason is he created us. He gave us life. The second reason is because he, uh, he gifted every person. And the third reason is because Jesus died on the cross for every person. That's worthy of honor. He made everyone dishonorable, honorable. And it's our job... And in this last passage, I want to hold up for you, if you could just put that up there. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. If you want these walls just to bust with people, uh, as we go into the world and, and how we treat each other, if we outdo each other in honoring as Christ has honored us, as loving as he's loved us, everybody's going to want to be a part of this congregation. Today we love because he first loved us. I want to pray for honor today. Honor among us and honor for others. Dear Heavenly Father, today we pray for the honor that you have given to us in so many ways. Today we remember the honor between uh, a man and a woman, Don and Lisa Riley. 36 years, Lord, you have blessed them with your honor over them, but then their honor for each other and uh, the love that you've given them to honor their children, their church, and all the people around them. Lord, we thank you for these 36 years and the many years that are to come. And in that, we ask that you would help every man and woman here today to honor each other, 
to lift each other up, to value, to treasure one another as you have treasured them. Lord, we know that uh, uh, there's a lot of ways to honor people, but the best way is in serving them as you would. We know that happens at the Children's Home Society in so many ways with uh, different people from our congregation and other churches. Lord, we ask that you would uh, continue to bless that ministry. We lift up the branch today in a special way. They're coming uh, to a place where uh, things are getting to the place where they're ready to start honoring young men, men of uh, different ages that have maybe dishonored themselves by abusing themselves and, uh, and all that they, they have gone through in life and to lift them up and to honor them as valued, valued people that you want to honor for an eternity. Bless the finishing of the home so that they can receive them and honor them in your glory. Lord, we thank you and praise you for, the, for our nation and for the honor that we have and the freedom to be able to give honor to those that govern over us. We ask that you would guide them in wisdom and understanding that goes beyond their own understanding. And Lord, that you would help them to serve in ways that will show honor to the people that they serve. Lord, we think of those that have been persecuted. I just want to uh, just stop here and share with you folks. You know, this, this insert is so, so good today, but uh, Vang uh, in Laos ministering, here's what he says. He says that God says to love others and to have no fear. Why do we fear other people if we are supposed to love them? You have to have love fully in your heart and not see others as the enemy. I don't see the government as the enemy, and I don't see any man as the enemy. I only see people who need love, and we could say honor. We need to love them and do good to them, like Jesus said. We should pray for them and bless them. This is a man, Lord, that is outdoing in regard to honor, honoring the people that have persecuted. Help us to see every person in this world as someone you honored by dying for them on the cross. All that we are is because the honor you bestowed on us. Help us to bestow it on others. In your name we pray.